in statistical mechanics today we are going to start to deal with a very important problem and this is the problem of aging model in the first lecture on this aging model i would just like to introduce you what is this aging model aging model first of all we will see some introductory facts regarding this aging model and after that we will define this aging model in detail and in the fourth coming lecture we will see the application part or how this model is applied to deal with the physical problem associated with the spins uh, in further lecture okay actually uh, in 1925 a well known physicist known as arnst aging has introduced a model which is uh, named after his name and it is called aging model actually this uh, aging model is a mathematical model used in statistical mechanics to describe the behavior of interacting spins this is a very remarkable fact in any physical system what will be uh, the behavior of interacting spins that is the core uh, aim to deal with this aging model okay in fact uh, this aging model is basically used to study the second order phase transition where you find that the system undergoes a uh, abrupt changes in its properties at the critical temperatures in fact uh, you have already studied the first order and the second order phase transition uh, in my videos uh, in the playlist of thermal physics and thermodynamics if you have not watched those videos i will suggest you go through the videos on first order and second order uh, phase transition uh, in the playlist of thermal physics and thermodynamics of my channel and then uh, you will be just acquainted of what is this phase transition what is first order phase transition and what is second order phase transition actually while dealing with the second order phase transition in that playlist i have introduced you only the second order phase transition uh, one of the important theorem which is called arnst arnst theorem i have introduced there but uh, some of the important uh, phenomena uh, which is related to second order phase transition particularly uh, the phase transition related to the magnetism has been left there actually this is the subject matter of this aging model we can explain the phase transition related to magnetism by the use of aging model so here uh, basically in this series of lecture we will actually deal with the phase transition of the ferromagnetic material into the paramagnetic material at the transition temperature which is called curie's temperature okay when you want to apply this aging model what uh, will be the various techniques actually you will see that uh, there are several techniques for using uh, the aging model and uh, some of the impo some important techniques are mean field theory actually in the second lecture we will discuss this mean field theory which is also called approximate method okay particularly we will deal with the wb approximation or zero order aging model in the fourth coming lecture okay and apart from that uh, we also use monte carlo simulations and uh, exact solution of some uh, limited problems actually exact solution of all problems are not possible so there are some limited problems where we seek for the exact solution okay 
this uh, aging model uh, has been ha has uh, actually found uh, finds its application in various fields as i have told you this uh, uh, our aim basically uh, in this series of lecture is to deal with the phase transition related to the magnetism so the applications include magnetism statistical phys physics and even in uh, describing the behavior of uh, describing the social behavior okay this is actually the subject matter of social science but in social science also this aging model finds its application okay and apart from that it also finds its application in neural networks okay so this was just a short introduction regarding this aging model now uh, i will define this aging model and uh, as i have told you that uh, the basic aim or the primary aim of this aging model when it was introduced by the scientist ernst aging was uh, actually to deal with the ferromagnetic phase transition so uh, you know that when a magnetic field is applied to some um, ferromagnetic material like uh, uh, iron or nickel at a temperature t which is less than the curie temperature okay then the metal gets magnetized it means uh, magnetic moment is developed in the uh, specimen of the metal okay and when the magnetizing field is removed then a residual or a spontaneous magnetization remains as long as the temperature of the specimen is less than the curie temperature denoted by the symbol tc all things these things you have studied uh, in in the chapter of <coughs> magnetism in solid state physics in your lower classes okay or also in uh, uh, modern physics uh, in your bsc level okay but when the temperature of the specimen is made greater than tc it means uh, greater than curie temperature then it is found that there is no spontaneous magnetization and this spontaneous magnetization abruptly vanishes when the temperature just tends to the curie temperature okay so uh, uh, we simply say that uh, uh, at curie temperature a ferromagnetic material is transformed or behaves like a paramagnetic material all these things can be explained in terms of the aging model and so this these facts are actually utilized to define the aging model okay as earlier i have told you that uh, in aging model we simply deal with the uh, interaction between the spins in a physical system so uh, you can say that in the aging model a system is represented uh, as an array of n fixed points called the lattice sites okay and this these lattice sites actually form an n dimensional periodic lattice where n is equal to 1 2 and 3 and uh, with each uh, lattice point let us say this is a lattice point a spin variable is associated with it in fact there is no uh, other variable associated with this lattice point this is your lattice point and as i have told you according to this model with this lattice point a spin variable si is associated and this uh, a spin variable si has uh, only two values or you can say there may be only two states of the spin these values are actually uh, are used actually to represent the state of the spin so the first value of this spin variable si is equal to plus 1 and this is actually also called a spin up state and the another value is minus 1 which represents the spin down state okay now uh, in in the given specimen there are different lattice site at different uh, points and different places 
when you talk about the interaction between the spins it is seen that uh, basically the nearest neighbor uh, of uh, the spin get interacted it means uh, uh, you can see that if there is a lattice site here and if there is a lattice site here and these are closest to one another then the spin of these two lattice site will get interacted but you can't say that uh, interaction between this lattice point and the lattice point here will take place. It means uh, we consider that uh, this is just a local effect uh, or locally the spin uh, uh, gets interacted with other spins. Okay. In fact, uh, when you place the specimen, for example, we place uh, the specimen in a, an external magnetic field then in the specimen actually interaction energy will be developed and that interaction energy or you can say the basic Hamiltonian of this system will contain actually two terms due to the two types of interaction here there will be two types of interaction first one will be just an internal interaction which is a spin a spin interaction between the neighboring lattice sites okay and the another will be external interaction with the magnetic field which has been applied from outside. So you can say that the Hamiltonian which describes the energy of the system includes mainly two terms. The first one as I have told you that is the interaction between the neighboring spins and another is an external magnetic field term. Okay. So uh, when we will write the expression for the Hamiltonian or the energy of this uh, uh, system in case of Ising model, this uh, an expression will contain two terms. The first term will be due to the interaction between the spins and the second term will be due to the interaction uh, with the external magnetic field. So you can say that the Hamiltonian which I have written here by this curly H, okay? Why I have written curly H? Uh, just, just it will be clear after some time you can see. And this uh, Hamiltonian which has been represented by curly H is equal to energy of this system which I have written by the symbol EI of SI. Actually this uh, uh, EI represents the energy of the system and I uh, the subscript I stands for the word Ig okay and since this energy will be spin dependent so uh, it has been written Ei of Si okay and the energy due to the internal interaction between the spins of the lattice sites uh, this term uh, this energy is given by minus summation over ij epsilon ij si sj actually uh, here this uh, symbol uh, which i have written between the angular bracket ij this is, is simply uh, there is no difference between writing ij and ji so i have written both are equal and this symbol actually denotes that uh, the nearest neighbor pair of spins okay for nearest neighbor uh, pair of spins, I have used this symbol because we consider the interaction between the nearest spins, not the spins separated by a large distance. And this epsilon ij, this is interaction energy, okay? This is interaction energy due to the spin. And si, sj, this represents a spin variables, okay? And the second term, I represent the energy due to the interaction of our system with the external magnetic field and this is given by mu h times summation i 1 to n s i okay here uh, this h uh, which is just a simple h capital h this represents actually the strength of the external magnetic field and mu you know that this mu is permeability and so this mu h represents the uh, represents actually the magnetic field energy so mu h is interaction energy associated with the external magnetic field h okay 
सो दिस इज द हेमिल्टोनियन और द और द एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टम इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द एजिंग मॉडल ओके आई थिंक वी हैव अंडरस्टैंड दिस एक्सप्रेशन द फर्स्ट टर्म इन आर एच एस ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन वन इज द एनर्जी ड्यू टू ए स्पिन स्पिन इंटरेक्शन एंड द सेकेंड टर्म इज एनर्जी डेवलप्ड इन द सिस्टम ड्यू टू द इंटरेक्शन विद द एक्सटर्नल मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ओके नो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द आइसोट्रॉपिक इंटरेक्शन वेन वी से आइसोट्रॉपिक इंटरेक्शन वॉट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स द इंटरेक्शन एनर्जी एफ सेल एन आई जे इज सेम फॉर एनी पेयर ऑफ टू स्पिनस इन दैट कंडीशन दिस एफ सेल एन आई जे विल बिकम ए कॉन्स्टेंट एंड इट विल बी टेकन आउट साइड ऑफ दिस साइन ऑफ समेसन ओके सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द आइसोट्रॉपिक इंटरेक्शन यू कैन सी दिस एफ सेल एन आई जे हैज द सेम वैल्यू एंड दैट वैल्यू आई हैव रिटर्न बाय द सिम्बॉल एफ सेल एन एंड सो इन दैट कंडीशन Uh, the energy of the system e i of s i will be given by minus epsilon summation over i j s i s j minus mu s summation over i one to n s i. Okay. Actually, the value of epsilon which is greater than zero, epsilon which is interaction energy due to a spin. If it is greater than zero, that is positive. That actually corresponds to ferromagnetism. Okay, but if epsilon is negative, that is the spin-spin interaction energy is negative. That corresponds to anti-ferromagnetism. Okay, that corresponds to anti-ferromagnet. Remember it. Now you know for any stable equilibrium state. the energy of the system must be minimum okay and when the energy will be minimum in fact in that condition the spins of the system are ordered when you say spins are ordered it means all spins will be parallel to one another and that is called actually the ordered spin state or ordered configuration or completely polarized state okay so you can say that uh, a configuration in which the energy will be minimum definitely the spins all spins will be parallel and uh, or in other words you can say that our system is completely polarized because you know in case of polarized light the electric field vector is directed in a, in the same direction in a particular direction not random direction so uh, so this term completely polarized has been used in the sense of that okay now uh, you can see uh, in this equation number 2 what will be actually the number of this uh, paired spin actually the number of this paired spin which i have written by the symbol ij inside the angular bracket this depends on the geometry of the lattice okay or the crystal in fact uh, a number which is called coordination number that determines what will be the value of this uh, uh, ij okay in fact this ij uh, contains uh, gamma n divided by two terms where n is actually the total number of lattice points and so if there is a n lattice point then this uh, pair of spins number of pair of spins this will be equal to gamma n divided by 2 in the study of coordination number in solid state physics we study this very clearly okay actually this gamma uh, which is actually the number of nearest neighbors of any given site or it is also called the coordination number and you should remember that this coordination number gamma is equal to 4 for a two dimensional square lattice and its value is 6 for a three dimensional simple cubic lattice sc means 
simple cubic lattice and its uh, value is 8 for the BCC lattice that is you can say that the body centered cubic lattice its value is equal to 8 okay as I have told you uh, the basic aim of this series of lecture is to deal with the transition of uh, ferromagnetic material into paramagnetic material or to deal with the phase transition of ferromagnetic material okay and you have seen that this interaction energy epsilon in case of isotropic interaction is greater than zero for ferromagnetism so our basic concern is for the case in which this epsilon will be greater than zero okay now for finding the value of different uh, uh, thermodynamical properties like uh, internal energy heat capacity and so on we need uh, in a statistical physics the idea of uh, the partition function you have studied it the partition function of uh, in case of this basic uh, Ising model is uh, simply the partition function of uh, the classical statistics but uh, since here we are talking about uh, a large number of lattice sites so that uh, transition <coughs> so the partition function in this case is given by z equal to summation over s1 s2 so on sn e to the power minus beta e of si here beta you know this beta parameter is 1 over kt where k is Boltzmann constant now since uh, this each s will have two values plus minus one or you can say that uh, each s will have two states a spin up a state and a spin down so actually the terms inside this summation will be uh, equal to two to the power n in number so i have mentioned it here you can see that here each s i ranges independently over the values uh, plus minus 1 and hence there are 2 to the power n terms in the summation okay so this was just a brief introduction and just a simple definition what is this Ising model but uh, uh, in the forthcoming lecture we will see uh, a, an approximate method which is also called mean field theory or the or bragg william approximation to deal with the problem of uh, tran magnetic transition okay uh, when uh, the ferromagnetic material will be transit into the paramagnetic material that problem will be dealt uh, by the william bragg approximation okay and this is also actually called ising model in zeroth approximation so this that BW approximation method will be discussed in the forthcoming lecture. Okay. Thank you very much.